Okay. Yay, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> Good morning. It really does look from far away like you're making like a gray and black. That's 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 happy. I have a ghost one at home. The linen and and this one's my shadow one. <laughs> Hello, welcome to our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Finish a papillon, start a papillon. Welcome to the sideshow. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. The Sun Dragon sideshow to be specific, right? Yes, I'm Rebecca. Look, I remembered, I'm starting off right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am the owner of, um, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessing over this, we'll talk about this in a second, of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in sunny and not as chilly as I thought it would be, downtown Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz, I'm the minion there. You look like you were almost gonna say something about the weather. Um, I walked up in just my sweater. Like I didn't I, put an extra shawl on and- I walked up in my winter coat and gloves. I got out of the car in gloves and I was like, <sighs> Yeah, it, it's, it's weird. But, but my watch says it's 36 degrees outside. Fahrenheit, for those of you I, who, who are watching us from places with Celsius. I think that the mornings we've come in in the 20s, like we, we the haven't upper paid 20s, and we've just been like, oh, it's, it's been like, oh, it's cold. And then today it's like five degrees warmer. And it's like, it's wave. noticeable. I also, I, I also installed one of my Christmas presents was a car seat warmer. And I installed that this morning. So I came in with my butt on fire. So for part of it, you can adjust it. But adjusting and driving probably shouldn't happen at the same time, but they did. What? <laughs> but that's why I'm, I'm a little late getting here. So it's already quarter after nine, in case you're keeping track. And we have a lesson coming, or not lesson, we have a shopping appointment coming in yeah, at 10. 10. And most of those lately arrive early. So we'll get going. But um, no problems this morning. <laughs> the the car seat is love it, mom. In case she's watching, it's wonderful. But it's designed for a simpler car seat that doesn't have the contours and bevels and all the fancy things that I have a scion. It's not that fancy of a car, but it's trying to make the seat comfy, which makes it hard to strap this thing in. So I did some of that this morning, and and left the house later than I wanted to. I should have known. I was going to put it in yesterday and it didn't happen. Well, you were busy all weekend. I was a little busy. Yes, a little busy. So, which will make this weekend even more fun because this weekend we have Saturday afternoon sit and stitch. Yay. Marathon of knitting and crocheting maybe, although I've been just doing a lot of knitting lately. I, I think I'm going to spin this weekend. Like. Mm -hmm. My hands are like, you've been knitting a lot. <laughs> Your hands are like, dude, give us a break. Um, so so for those of you who haven't attended yet, or those of you who have, um, our Saturday afternoon sit and stitch events are once a month and dual platform. So you can, if you want to see Liz spin, you should join on Zoom. Zoom is where you will see other people who are participating and me. I'm one of the many tiles, right? Um, and Zoom, it's if you have Zoom, you do the same thing you do for evening, knit nights. You put in the shop phone number when it says, what do you, if, when you join, it says, give me a code. You put in the shop phone number, which is 828-877-3550. And you go into the wait room and I go, boop, yes, you can come in. Um, if you wanna join on Facebook, and there's many reasons to do that, some of which are, it is not as much of a drain on your bandwidth, so it can be easier to join. Um, you don't care to be on camera, but you don't have to be on camera on Zoom either. Uh, although we might be like, are you a real person if you don't? If, if, if you um, just go on Facebook, you get to hear. Yes. If you go on Facebook, you see me. The camera's on me, not on Zoom, because I feel like that's an invasion of privacy. Zoom is kind of its own private area. Um, but you can hear everything that goes on. You can hear Zoom. You can hear people doing silly things on Zoom. And I sometimes have to remind the Zoom people that they're being broadcast on Facebook. But <laughs> it's not a thing. 
Um, you can type comments and usually what I'll try to do, I have too many things going on to type back because Facebook will be on my phone, Zoom will be on my computer and that's as tech savvy as I get. So I will often read your comment out loud to the group and respond to it on Facebook. So, and there's a little bit of delay, which is always fun. It's like, you'll type your comment and then depending on my attention span and the Facebook delay, you'll hear about it a few, like a minute later. So, you know, it's fun, you should come. Um, we always have our sit and stitch twice a week on Tuesday and Friday nights. That's only on Zoom with the shop phone number code. Um, it's from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. All of these are Eastern time. Saturday is going to be from 1 to 5 Eastern time. Um, and in case you're watching this at a random time, the Saturday we're talking about is January 23rd. So um, <laughs> if you're watching this after January 23rd, if you've been catching up, you missed it plan for the next one, which will be sometime in February. Ooh, random aside. Random aside. About calendars. Um, someone on Facebook pointed out that the February calendar is is a box. Like it's perfectly like starts on Square. a Sunday it, it, and, and ends on a Saturday. Now she's got to look it up. Just, they, they were like, this is like the thing that we've all been waiting for for normalcy or whatever is like February is a box. <laughs> so check me on that because I... Um, Maybe, maybe not. No. No? Oh, I was wrong. It's just one square off. They must have been looking at a different year then or something. I have to go back and find that now and say, sadness. That's that's so full. It's kind of sad. Maybe it's next. No, it goes February it goes 2026 off. is a box. Well, that's ridiculous. I get, no, you know what we can do? We can make our calendar start on Monday. Just so February is a box. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I go back and find that, and I don't remember who posted it, if I go back and find that, I bet they had they had the, the month start on a Monday instead of a Sunday. So anyway, so much for that. Um, I was like, oh, this will be, fun. no. No. Okay. So um, yeah, I got some of our schedule out of the way up front so <laughs> we can talk about other stuff. Um, so what are you wearing? Oh, look what I've been fussing with half the time we've been talking because I want my little my little Charlie Brown stripe to like look good on camera. <laughs> it looks so cute. <laughs> Isn't it cute? This is a project I started and finished this weekend. Oh, look, look, there's an end. I didn't sew any of my ends in. Yeah, the snake um, wandering down your back. Yeah, yeah. There's that was story. <laughs> that was the story. There's a couple stories. First of all, I put some other. Uh, oh, oh. This cowl, which I have now sewn the ends in, so it will not create snakes up my my head. Um, I didn't put the ends in, and I stuck this on my head to like keep warm or something. And apparently, it was Friday. The the, <laughs> the extra yarn was kind of like <laughs> meandering around her head, and then just kind of hung out. I thought I and, pulled it off, and, and Liz is like. Is that a snake on your head? Like it's this bluey green. I mean, it was really pretty, but it's like, at least oh, it's it yarn. Like, it's yarn. At least it didn't look like a spider. Cause then you might- I would have like lit the shop on fire. You might have killed me. <laughs> Bam. Or just run screaming. Um, yeah. Been like, I'm not gonna tell you what's on your head, but I need to leave now. Yeah. <laughs> So, so that was this one. And this one, the, the ends are all woven in. And I will say, if you're gonna do the, um, the Lara cowl, which is this one, um, where you change your, the beginning and ending, where you change yarn um, on the row where the, the color is pulled up, it, it was almost impossible not to have a hole there. And so I, my solution to that, I can't even see it anymore. I think it's right here, is um, I use the ends the long black end that I had left when I finished and I actually sewed it up right down where um, the beginning and end of row was and no holes anymore. So if you're gonna make this cowl, know that you might have holes right where you're changing yarns and it's not the end of the world. There's a fix. Oh, the other disclaimer on this, I'm, I'm squirreling. I you're will fine. get to this. These are my like weekend pro side projects where it's like, oh, I'm gonna start something new. And this one I finished easily because it's super bulky. 
light super. The point I wanted to make about this, it's light super bulky. This was written for Malabrigo Rios, which is very similar in yardage to like Tierra del Fuego, La Sequoia, which are a little bit thinner than a true super bulky. But then you're knitting it on a 17. And I used also Yana, which I think has been classified maybe as a bulky, but on the heavier end is bulky. Um, again, same yardage as Malabrigo Rios. But um, I went for a walk with this on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And the wind cut through it pretty well. It, I was warm, but when the wind blew, I felt it because it you can't see it. I can kind of see it when I hold it up. I can see some light through it. Um, something that is a light super bulky on 17s, it's going to look really pretty, but there's going to be enough room for air to pass through it. It's not going to be super tight and bulky and warm, which may be a plus for some people. And for other people, it might be like, no, if I'm going to do super bulky, I need it thick. Yeah. Arr. So know that. Okay. Um, I felt the wind. I, I was warm, but I felt the wind. That's a thing. Uh, so, to turn to this, so since I did that, Ambo O'Brien released a new pattern that um, it's, it's mosaic, so all the bumples you see here are made by knitting and slipping. Two colors going on in this, only one color used at a time. Um, we decided, it's called the Kentia Cowl. And we decided when we saw it, I was like, ooh, maybe feeder book because color changing would be fun. And Liz made the very valid point that we've already done the night shift and the shift and the lots of things with feeder book. Always looks good with feeder book. And she said, what about the Cumulus Rainbow? Cumulus something, Rainbow. Something different. Long color repeats. So the colors that are in this, and then this is the leftover. Ooh, I wanted to check. Um, so we got, and Cumulus is, it's written, the pattern's written for worsted weight. Cumulus is a worsted weight cotton. So this is, and it's one of the softest cottons we have in the shop. So this is ridiculously soft. My neck is now cold because it actually was keeping me warm. Some people think cotton and they're like, summer, not when it's thick cotton. And I have, it, it's thick and fluffy. It's not just, you know, I have 45 grams of this left, which means I use just over half of it. Probably not enough in here to get quite another cowl out of this. But I started from the color combo. Um, we've got two different dye lots of this or batches of this yarn. And this one has the yellow on the outside. The other one start has the has the, the teal, well, the, the red part, purple part on the outside. Um, and so I knew I wanted more of the dual tones in this cowl and I didn't know how far I'd get, but it started down here. It's knit flat. It starts down here with the kind of fuchsia, what color would you call it? It's a bright pink. It's a bright pink. And then it went to purple. And the cool thing is you follow the instructions and suddenly you have dots of the other color. You've got what I'm calling the Charlie Brown stripe, like a Charlie Brown shirt, but prettier. Um, it went to purple, deep purple, and then to a blue, and then to a teal. And if you go on my Instagram, you can see it all flat. But then you pick up stitches and do an I-cord bind off across the top. You do a double I-cord bind off, which actually seams the back together right there. So it's like a three needle bind off, except you're also doing an I-cord. And then you pick up stitches all around this triangle base here and you do an I-cord bind off along the bottom. Now, main color was a gray cumulus. Contrast was the rainbow. And I picked the part of the rainbow that would go better with the gray. If I started from the yellow, I might've wanted to pick a different contrast, who knows. Um, I, I have a sneaking suspicion if we have time today, which we may not because things get weird on Tuesdays. I wanna make kits of this because I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, I did not block this. You're supposed to block this before you do the I-cord edging, but it's cotton. 
cotton does not necessarily shape up a whole lot with blocking. It's, it could, it's but cotton and it's in garter. It's garter mosaic, which means there were no pearl stitches used in the making of this at all. No pearls, no actual sewing because yep. you're three needle binding off. The only cord. sewing that I have left is all my ends. And um, that was going to happen this morning. And then the cat sat on my scissors. It's not a So not a thing. So I, I did other things and still was late coming into the shop. So um, I'm going to see how much of, I have 14 grams of this left. And she calls for like 210 yards of your main color to finish this. And, and because of its construction, this kind of loose chainette stuff, fluffiness, there's 251 yards on this, even though it's a worsted weight, which is why I still have yarn left. A true worsted weight, you might be yarn chickening just a little bit with your main color. Now, I've discussed with some knitters over the weekend different ways to do this. Like if you look at the color change here where the color changes the background color, it's really cool. This could have been amazing with the rainbow as the background color. And I probably would have seen more of the color shift and more of it would look like this. The stripe would have been gray, but the, the zigzag would have been gray with color changing dots and the rest of it would have been this morph of colors. It would have been absolutely gorgeous. We also discussed like you could do two balls of rainbow and start on opposite ends. That would be so cool. It, you could do eat, one ball of done. Ito yeah. at opposite ends. Mm -hmm. We'll also do the same. One disclaimer I will make about the I-cord bind up. If I had done the rainbow as the background and the solid as, as the little dots up here, I probably still would have done the solid as the I-cord given the choice. And I'll tell you why. Um, the It may or may not show up as a lovely stripe of color changing color when you're doing all of um, your, your seaming and, and finishing because like the top part, you pick up stitches all the way across and then you break the yarn and go back to the other end and start doing your I-cord bind up, which means your pickup stitches, which may or may not show, will probably be a different color than your bind off, depending on where in the color change you are. There's, there's a lot of color here, so it could be that it's all going to be green anyway. Not if, a big deal. If you Same do, thing with down here. If you do a short variegated, you'll get all the different colors in mm -hmm. your but the long one, it might you know, be three quarters of the way around in one color, and then you get a splash of color before you, you know, or you know, but the, with the picking up colors, yeah, you might pick up in yellow and then it changes while you're doing the I-cord bind off yeah. to the green, but you still have some yellow showing on the end. And, yeah. and it depends on if that's going to bother you or not. If it's the multicolor, it's the multicolor and it's wonderful. It's all good. So um, I think that could be really pretty. I want to make it six different ways yeah. now. The dappled could look really, really mm -hmm. cool for an I-cord bind off. Our dappled um, has speckles in it, that kind of stripe too, but quicker stripes then uh, color change over the whole scheme of the yarn. So we may be putting together kits of this later. Um, we'll see how many combos we come up with or if we do a dappled or something. There, there are new colors of this that I haven't ordered yet. Because we have a grab ton of yarn coming in this week and we already have yarn really coming take in. so much. Yeah. So we'll make, we'll make combos with the colors we have. And if I order more, which I probably will, um, we'll make new kits when they come in. So um, there's lots of things that make me want to make new kits. Like we have new colors, of, one new color of Cairns. We have some kits that need refilling. Like yeah. uh, the night shift based on inventory we have in the shop, the Cairns, you know, all this kind of stuff. So we shall see. But um, no, this was a great experiment. I got addicted to it. So I didn't make much progress on other things. I can show some stuff off, but I've been talking for so long. What did you do this weekend? So I um, finished a project. I, I discovered this was the weekend of backing stuff out. Oh no. Because uh, I'd put something down and pick it up and just start working where I assumed I was. And I wasn't, 
and I wouldn't find it for a little bit. You should have learned from me not to make assumptions. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've only like done the living. Pavillon pattern a billion times. I can do it without looking. That's a lie. <laughs> no, so, because because there's so much intricacy to the Papillon. Mm -hmm. Not that you shouldn't do it. If you're a, more of a newbie knitter, you can totally do it. You just got to pay attention. You got to count. You, you got to count. And like one section, I think I was working on during knit night and I'm at knit night. What ends? I start, um, <laughs> I just, I forget where I am and well, talking and counting and, and engaging in conversation and knowing where you are in the pattern. Oops, sorry. Doesn't work for me either. Um, I backed out mm. a quarter of a back and forth row. Did you tell the, me you were throwing that color in there? No. <laughs> Sorry, you backed out a quarter of what? I, I backed out a quarter of one row, the five row, the back and forth of the contrasting color, and all of the back and forth of the other row. I frogged it. I was not going to tink it. I try, I actually started tinking it and went, this is going to take way longer than, so I wove my needle through all my stitches on the row five I wanted to pull back to. And I took my time Everyone making sure to catch every stitch, which is kind of interesting when you have the wrap and turns, trying to figure out which stitch to grab. But <laughs> <laughs> That's why you should go through a, si a row five. I did, but there are no rapid rap turns on top of the row five. Your your first back and forth wraps around. That's on the, the rows. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I went through the row five, <laughs> but there are wraps going around the top of the stitch mm -hmm. on row five. So you have to go under the wrap and turns to make sure you get the right. Anyway, Rebecca, you know asked, what Carol would say. I know, put in lifeline. You should have had a lifeline. I'm in there. not putting in a lifeline. <laughs> Personal preference. Yeah. Yes. Um, so anyway, and then I, I frogged it, life was fine. And then Rebecca goes, Well, how did you get all your or did you mark where your stitch markers were supposed to be? And I was like, I marked the center stitch, but I didn't mark anything else. And she goes, What? And I said, There's a handy dandy sheet in here yeah that tells it's you. the sheet that everyone thinks is the start of the pattern and freaks out but it's not the start of the pattern it is it is how to keep track of your stitches so that was pretty genius and i went mm. so Let's i showed up the dark and it goes with not, what you're wearing I is know, that I is that, that. <laughs> i thought she planned it ha okay um i didn't weave weave ends in so my four not woven ends oops chair down <laughs> It's not a thing. Not a thing. Okay, microphone's in the way, but oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Look at this. That's going to make such a, except for my tummy, such a good cover <laughs> photo. Cover my tummy. There we go. Woo! <laughs> I ran out of the Lorna's laces. Yes. I ran out of the black. Actually, oh, I, I like the pods in the other. Yeah. The, is that why you did the gray? Um, we're swirling here. Sorry. The pods the I black. wound up have, I had like that much left. Of but it looks so pretty. So the pods at the end are Daydream Dye Works uh, Dark Side of the Moon. That little spot or right there, you moon. can't tell on camera. You can kind of see in person it's yeah. a little different, but it's pretty cool. And then I did the black on the next row, and then I did gray for my little scallopy ends just to make sure they showed off. And then I bound off in the Blood Moon just because it looks Because it adds some fun stuff. Yeah. It's really pretty and soft and squishy and, and and no we don't have that yarn in the shop because i bogarted it that's a worsted weight from a long time a ago. long time ago but that's laura's laces and we have other beautiful things in we actually we have one skein of what it looks like in fingering weight yeah which isn't enough to do a papillon nope. but you could do a papillon cowl yes so there is that i finished that and then I started a new project. I have a lot of um, the neighborhood fiber company. What's the Capital Luxury Sport? Capital Luxury Sport. We need more neighborhood fiber company in at the shop. 
I gotta figure that uh, out. I I went on I went on our system and went, hey, how many colors do I have? I have like six. It's something we got in when we first opened the shop, and and we haven't really restocked much of it. We need to, but I'm still cash flow. So, it's got cashmere in it, and winter is always coming, and I'm cold. I shouldn't be cold, cool. but I am. <laughs> Yeah. So I started the zigzag scarf. Or it's supposed to be a scarf. And it's supposed to be in fingering and it's only supposed to be like that long. And it's supposed to be with this color changing like like alternate every row and yeah. stuff and noro. It's and, yeah. really, really cool. And I'm like, I want it bigger. She's lizifying it. Well, I just blew up the yarn and blew up the needles. Yeah. Same stitch count. And it's still not as big as I wanted, but I'm not going back now because you can aggressively block it. Perhaps. That's still gonna be good. I don't know. Anyway, it's gonna be a scrappy. I bought some cashmere to go in between my rows. So it all cashmere is warm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's got a cashmere blend noro sample that we got for the shop that she's testing for me. But um we're probably not going to bring it into the shop because this would be like, it'd be like $45, $50 for a, a single 100 gram skein. Which and I, I, I showed it to Rebecca before. It's what? It's it's cashmere. And it's cashmere or something. And wool. Yeah. Okay. It's it's like, really high cashmere content, right? Really it's high. It's still cashmere like 30. Content. It's not for like, a blend. Yeah. Right. I'll but, see if I can find it. But so feeling it with the 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 luxury sport, which is almost the same cashmere content. It's merino yeah. and cashmere and like a little nylon, I think, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, got like 20% cashmere. The the yeah. capital luxury. Maybe. Yeah. And the capital luxury sport is like thirty dollars, around thirty dollars a, a ball. The Noro it's also hand dyed. Does not feel as soft as you would think it's, it should. It's softer, it's softer than, than Noro. Or e, the yeah, Ito. I was about to say, it's, it's softer than run-of-the-mill Noro, but... But it it has a different... If you're looking for that ultimate silky soft, it is not what most people would think. Most people would be like, this feels so soft. What is this? Miyabi is 65% wool and 35% cashmere, which is a very high cashmere content. Um, but this is one of our tests is how a ball feels in your hands, like just on the shelf and how it feels knit up can sometimes be very different. Yeah. And um, which is why I wish we had enough time and energy and, and budget to knit a sample with everything here on the shop. But it can go to one of two, it can go either way. There can be one you feel in your hands and you're like, eh, didn't think it was that soft. You feel it knit up. You're like, ooh. And vice versa. Like, yeah, this feels pretty good in the skein. You're like, oh yeah, I feel the cashmere. And then, but knitting it up, it's like, eh. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, probably a little more than eh, but it's, I, it's like, it, it feels okay. better than, than the Ito, mm -hmm. but it's just wool, which is just straight up wool, but it's not enough of that feel that everybody is going to want. To and I, I think I have to order bags of like eight yeah. at least. And I don't know if I'm going to sell that much. And then you want to get like here <laughs> behind the scenes of a yarn shop. <laughs> um, you want to get at least a bag of, of each color and, and you want to get a range, a palette of colors. Yeah. You don't just want to get one in because you need to possibly beckon to people who like different color combos. That's a lot of an investment. There's a couple other Nora yarns that we've brought in a wide range of colors and we've sold like four balls. And that's nothing against Noro, but sometimes it's the price and sometimes it's the feel and sometimes it's the colors and it's just, it's, it's a gamble. And it's not a gamble that we're about to take on in pandemic times. So unless we have enough people saying, ooh, I want a skein of that. And, or I want to buy at least half your bag that makes it worthwhile to bring it. So mm -hmm. um, things you might not have realized about how to work at a yarn shop. It's not, it's not just, hey, I need one skein of this. Could you get it for me? And it's a yarn we don't carry from a company we don't carry in the shop. 
We'll try to be as gentle as we can about that. So I'm making a scrappy cashmere. She's testing it out and you know, we have the yarn, so we're gonna see what happens. With it. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of cashmere blend at home and you know, so I was like, ooh, it'll look really cool in the little black. I'm just, you know, the black is 100% cashmere. Mm. So it gets one ridge and everything else gets like three because I'm like, uh, I can't waste that. Mm. And so I worked on that. And then I'm almost done with this row. I started. Um, she started another path on. But I started it last week. I was working I know. on it and nobody. You've seen this before. But Even I'm a little bit further. Um, it's what Rebecca and I were talking about when we started the ghost or oh, yes. I have a ghost, which is almost translucent. Um, I was like, it looks like it's black and gray and which is also a cool combo for a papillon. I've seen it, which is kind of what I was going for. Um, I'm yeah. doing the luminosa because the luminosa has the, the colors, but they're fuzzy behind an alpaca um, poof or llama poof. So this Chain is that with poof blown into it. The light blue. Um, and so it has this overall black look unless there's sunlight shining on it. Like outside, this would just way show up. So I got to row nine and on camera, it almost looks black and gray. <laughs> See, I told you. And, and but there's look, there's colors in there. I promise yep. there's even more colors. In so there. this is this is the light blue. This is purple. I got I have six different colors, so I'm going to do it like the the six different color moth. Um, the next section will be even more, you know, my pop is red. Um, but it from far away, it looks just like a shadow papillon and up close or in the sunlight, you get the pop of colors. Like Carol has made some stuff with um with the luminosa and when we're on zoom it looks just kind of black yeah maybe hints of color but then she takes a picture of it in the right light and it's like oh color yeah very cool yeah very very so cool. I fun. was I I was like oh it's another you know I've done um the the negative and positive you know where I flip the colors back and forth I still have to finish that one um I just I like playing with the colors and getting to see what kind of butterfly I can add to my kaleidoscope next. <laughs> um, I I didn't work on much. Oh, wait, I, she's not done. You can pull out your bag. I added another two. We discussed this beforehand. You didn't think you got a lot done. She's like, but it's gonna look like I got a lot. <laughs> it looks like she got a lot done. I focus mostly on one thing. I have like minuscule things to show on anything else, but that's huge. Oh my gosh. There we go. She, she, she modified and made this thing bigger. It's yeah, it's a, wow. So that's I'm, cool. I'm almost Beaufort, halfway. By the way. Almost halfway. Almost halfway. And how much have you used half of your yarn or? No, I am, um, I tied knots because it's Beaufort. So one ball got me that much. Second ball ended here. So I get about two and a half panels panels per and ball. And you have 14, I remember that. I have panels. 14 panels to do, yeah. Okay. So, and then um, I think it'll only take two balls to get the this. And then I have to make the little um, mm. squiggles and wiggles. She only, <laughs> she has real squiggles and wiggles um real mink yeah at home they're a little crunchy funny looking but the rest of them are soft um so <laughs> i have to bring so, them back in so they can dance for everybody oh, gosh. <laughs> oh boy um because they forgot to say happy new year they were they they were made into a stole a very long time ago for anyone who's concerned about the treatment of animals that was long before our lifetime um so one of our knitters her they were her grandmother's and they'd been sitting in a basement for a long time. Oh boy. So. Um, so she, really she basically bought out almost a whole bag, which is 10. Um, she got, you got what, like seven? Seven, seven yeah. Or um, of the Panther, which is the black faux fur, but we got more in in case you want to make black faux fur fun things. If, if you do it the way the pattern 
holes, mm -hmm. like on 11 needles much. and you do it shorter and you, you know, it comes just above your elbow. You, it, it only takes like a ball and a half of your contrast and like four, maybe five bowls of the, um, so it's, it's a whole lot. And those aren't super expensive. So no. it's kind of fun. I um, just needed something to cover my elbows. All right. I have three things to mention before we go. One is, um, this was in one of my morning meditations, my striped sweater, which I've made like almost no progress on, but you know, since I knit on it this weekend, I'm showing you all and it's going to be it so lovely and fluffy and soft. So and cool. So and now I'm like, I need to do a papillon in those colors. Oh God. Okay. Well, it was pretty cool. Um, and we made two new papillon, uh, it's my Monday. We made two new stripes sweaters. This is by Andrea Mowry, by the way. Uh, we made two new combos using Patagonia and five colors instead of the four colors of this. And they're so luscious. I really want to make one out of one of those. Um, but I, I satiated that urge in a different way. I'll show you in a second. Because um, I always want to do more things. But I have so much stuff on needles. But I did finish this. And I did finish this in the past week, week and a half or so. So that counts, right? Yay. Eh. There's things that need loving for me that haven't gotten loving in a while. I promised to bring this in last week. I've made absolutely no progress on it since I last showed it on a morning meditation, but I hadn't, I need to show crochet some love. This is the big, this is my Dolce Vinci cowl that it's going to go this way. It's going to be blocked out to lusciousness, be a big, huge cowl with an edging on it. But this is much bigger than the last time I showed it off on camera. It's got eyelets and waves, and you can even see them from back there. So from way back here. So I wanted to make sure I showed that off. This is 100% llama. It is so soft, the llama lace from Queensland. It oh would be gosh. scrumptious to knit with as well. It's a fingering weight. I am on a size D needle, which you almost can't even see Oop. on camera. Hook, thank you. I'm hoping this is just Monday. Two days ago, Carol was like, I was messing up my words and she's like, migraine? I'm like, no. I'm still messing up my words, which maybe means it's building up. We'll see. We'll keep you all stay tuned on that. Um, so since I finished a project and a project caught my eye, and even though I need to work on all my sweaters and projects, I started something new last night. This is a shocked face, <laughs> especially since we're wearing masks and no one can actually see our shocked face. Just put your hand right here. It's shocked face. Uh -huh. I haven't put that in one of my listings, but not not this one, I think. Maybe this one. You, oh, you did. I started. This is, this is, <laughs> what? We discussed this last week and. We picked out some yarn for it. Um, this is, because this, okay. This is a Spas Tricot's, it doesn't look like much yet. But it's, it's a wrap by Espas Trico. This is the whole length of it, actually. I mean, it might block bigger. The shorter side, so yes, the width. When she's right, she's got to catch me on it, because usually I'm right. <laughs> it's not, I'm not right all the time. Um, it, it's, it's the, um, oh, I put it in my thing. I'm going to, hang on, hang on, because we got to go soon, because we got a lesson coming up. It's the Isaiah. I'm going to guess is how it's pronounced. It's A I S and E with a little, I forget which the name of the the mark, but there's an accent over it. As a two. Um, the original one, I was looking at this, the original one was written for either a lace weight or a fingering weight on like a three or a four. Right. And it's like, it's going to have little eyelets and a lot of stockinette and little eyelets and a lot of stockinette. There's a picture. Very simple knit. Um, what she did with the second revamp of it is it is a lace weight. We only have one lace weight in the shop. It's Mayu lace. It's like um, yummy goodness. It's like silk and cashmere and maybe little merino. Mm -hmm. I gotta look at the tag. But um, and and a mohair which is counts as a lace weight. So these are the two yarns that I'm holding together. Fluffy, soft goodness, um, but I'm knitting on a size seven. My size seven needle has gotten a lot of workout lately. This was on a size seven. This is on a size seven. At least two of my sweaters, the, the 
This is on a size seven. So it's, it's fluffy goodness. What I love is, so you can't see it in this skein, but there's just a little bit of tonal quality yeah. to the Mayu lace. And it's a gray, so it's a like a dark blue, not navy, but kind of a dark blue um, Mayu lace and a light gray mohair. And there's a little bit of the tonal blue is coming through. It's really, really pretty. So this is going to be like my go-to. I need a break from the long sweater knitting rows. I'm going to work on this. I mean, I did this, I literally cast this on an hour before I went to bed last night. Right. And yay. And it's going to be, it's so soft and heavenly, but not as like fly away fluffy as mohair by itself. No. And if you wanted to make it slightly bigger, just go up. You could push that needle size for that combination up to a nine or a 10. I've done mohair by itself on a 10. Yeah. Yes. You can with go the, even with bigger. the lace. You can go up to it and it will still be warm mm -hmm. because the mohair grabs all the little air bubbles and heats you up. If you want to see what it's like to knit with them together, it was my morning meditation this morning. So you can go take a look at that. Um, it was also my first coffee accident with my morning meditation. Not bad, but in turning this around and trying to untangle a little mohair that was caught on my tie up here, my needle flicked into my coffee and flicked a little bit of coffee, like, woo. So the needle had coffee I had to get off. I might post it later just for fun, the full video. Uh, a little bit of, this protected my mohair the coffee got on the, on my yarn it and not on the mohair. And I think one little dribble got on this. But that's the first time I've ever had a coffee incident with my morning meditation. <laughs> anyway. Because no knitter or crocheter has ever has had ever had issues with issues beverages. With beverages. Um, so yes, I am. This is exciting. I, some of my older projects really need some love for me. They really, really do. But you know, this was too good to not attempt. We have sippy cups. Yes, we have adult sippy cups when we have <laughs> when we have knit night in person. So, and some people need them. Us included. <laughs> so especially with red wine involved. Yes. Mm. Anyway, um, we have um, my timer thing that came up four minutes before our appointment. So we're gonna say goodbye, and and try to make this appropriate for an appointment because this is where appointments happen too. So if you want the experience of sitting where we film, make an appointment to come inside. If uh, what, you what? want to like, subscribe, all those all things. fun things. Share this with other people who would enjoy it and want to subscribe. Ah. Stay tuned for the uh, most dangerous show of the week, which is tomorrow. We sell you stuff. Yay. And okay. who knows what we'll do if yes. we don't. <laughs> and any other things, um, Dear Becky and Lizzie. is Thursday. Send us emails. Yep. Liz at sundragonartfiber.com. The address for mailing we've said in a lot of videos and we gotta go. We so gotta go. bye. Somewhere.